So right here, you ought to really feel your pec flex and contract. Hey guys, I'm Mark McKillier with Live Anabolic, and today I'm going to show you four really great exercises using just bands to build a big chest. And yes, you can do it at home with nothing but some bands. Now, the beauty of bands are they're very inexpensive. They're small and lightweight, which means you can take them with you when you're traveling, whether it's for work or vacation, so you don't have an excuse to miss your workouts. And then because they're so inexpensive, guys, I highly recommend you buy two complete sets. And when I say that, make sure you get both sets from the same manufacturer and the same resistance amounts, okay? So I'm going to explain why in just a second. But if you have two sets from a physics perspective, it will actually work better. And I'm going to get into the details and show you why and compare it to the cable crossover machines that we see at the gyms, okay? And if you've never gone to a gym and seen those cable crossover machines, guys, those things are fantastic. They're one of the most busy machines at the gym. Everybody's on them. They cost, I don't know, $3,500, $4,000 for one. And there's just a ton of exercise you can do, and they're really effective, and there's a lot of great chest exercises you can do. But instead of $3,500, okay, we can buy two sets of bands for mm, roughly $20 a piece, all right? And so for 40 bucks, we can replicate almost every single exercise you do at the gym on one of those expensive cable crossover machines. Before I get into the exercises today and the physics behind them and why two sets is better than one, I want to remind you about our Facebook group. Click the link below this video. Just trust me. It's a blast. 20,000 guys, same age as you and me. I'm the moderator, so I'm answering questions, plus I'm posting things, and then, of course, everybody else is, too. And it doesn't matter if you don't like Facebook. Just create an account. Don't use your own name. You don't have to post any pictures of yourself. You can be anonymous, but you will get a lot out of it. Trust me, everybody says it's their favorite group on all of Facebook, so join. And then also, guys, click the little like button below this video, you know, the little thumbs up. Help us spread the word about this YouTube channel, all right? Um, we have over half a million subscribers. I want to get to a million, all right? So the best way to do that is for you to like it, share these videos with your other buddies, just hit the share button, and then subscribe to our channel because Gary and I are cranking out tons of videos every week for you guys, and you don't want to miss any, all right? Please help us spread the word. I want to hit a million. All right, so now let's get into the four different exercises. And I want to explain the physics before I actually demonstrate the exercises. So you do not have to have two sets like I have here, okay? You can, you, you can do each one of these exercises with a single set of bands. And of course, you would mount them right in the middle here behind you, okay? I have two sets and I've mounted them as far apart as I can. Matter of fact, I've, I've created a gym in my garage before and I've mounted eye hooks into the studs and I separated the anchor points by about 10 feet. Okay, this is a little closer than I would like them, but still that's pretty good width right there. And the reason why two sets is better than one is because when we're doing flies and presses, all right, Look at the angle of the bands here. So as I'm trying to do a fly and bring the handles together, it's pulling my hands apart and back. So it's pulling them out and back. And that's the same resistance. That's the same angle of resistance you would get if you were at the gym using that really expensive cable machine. All right. Now, if I only have one set and the anchor is right behind me, okay, when I'm doing a fly, a straight line from the handle back to the anchor point right here is pretty much straight in line with my arm, okay? So out here, I don't have much resistance because I'm close to the anchor point, but it is pulling me back and apart. But as I close my arms and go through the full range of motion, when I'm in this position, 
the resistance is pulling straight back behind me, pulling me back this way. It's not pulling me out this way, all right? When the anchor's out wide like this, the resistance from the band is pulling my arm apart, not straight back. So anyway, it's a long story. I'd have to draw like a diagram uh, from my old physics classes on a whiteboard to explain better, but just trust me, two is better than one, and the reason why two is better than one is because you can spread your anchor points apart, and that creates more of an outward pulling effect against your chest muscles as opposed to just pulling straight back, all right? So, if you have one set, that's fine. Use the anchor point directly behind you and do the exercises exactly like I'm gonna show you when I'm, even though I'm using two anchor points. Okay, so the cool thing about having two anchors is I double up the bands. They just, the same color bands, of course, I've chosen a green and a yellow, run through the anchor and back here. So, so basically I'm, it's, I'm quadrupling all right, what I would normally be using, or doubling, I should say. Um, and the same thing goes over here. I use the exact same color bands. They, each band loops through the anchor and comes back to the handle and, and locks on, okay? So, here we go. Just like every other band exercise, okay, I want you to start the movement with pre-existing tension. So if, you're if I'm standing too close to the door or back towards the anchors, right here, there's basically no tension. So at the beginning of the movement, I've got almost no resistance. Now, as soon as I start to bring the handles together, doing a chest fly, yes, I get resistance. But I only have resistance from here to about right here, and then almost nothing back here. All right, so I want to have plenty of resistance at the widest part of the movement, okay? So guys, make sure you pick bands that are not so stiff and so heavy that you can't create that initial resistance. So I'm stepping away from the door, away from the anchor, so I already have a, a good amount of tension already right now, just holding it here now. I can go back, and now there's basically no tension. But you don't need to go this far back, okay? You only need to go to about right here, and then squeeze together. It's almost like you're hugging a big giant 55 gallon barrel. And, uh, notice my elbows have a little bend in them. Okay. I'm not using completely straight arms here. I'm kind of like hugging a big round barrel and I'm keeping that same bend in my elbows throughout the full range of motion. So when I come together, I'm gonna to have to bring my hands together and then down slightly towards my sternum, okay? A little lower than your chest. So down below my chest, kind of where my upper abs are, where my sternum, and then control that resistance throughout the full range of motion. Fantastic exercise. And as we progress through the other three different exercises, I'm gonna point out to you the fact that we're gonna change these anchor points. We're gonna start up high, but we're eventually gonna move them down to a midpoint and a low point for the next three exercises. Okay, so exercise number two, slightly different. We're gonna be doing a chest press and I've moved the anchor from the high point down to a midpoint. All right, so this is, this is gonna simulate using dumbbells on a horizontal or flat bench. And basically I'm doing dumbbell bench presses, you know, on, in a flat plane. And what you're gonna see with these four different exercises is I like to vary them between fly movements and pushing or press movements. So that initial exercise is a fly, it's only getting your chest, okay? Now this ex exercise, it's going to be getting our chest, but it's also going to be using our triceps and also our front delts. Now, see how I'm leaning forward? I already got pretty good resistance here. I can already feel, all right, the weight of the bands pulling me back. If I was back here, I'd have almost nothing to push against until I got out 
this far. So you got to lean forward, okay? I'm, I'm just going to basically start like I would if I was laying flat on my back with dumbbells, and I'm going to push straight forward and bring my hands together. So this is a pushing movement, not a fly movement. Now the reason I'm changing the anchor point from high to low is because I'm going to emphasize slightly different parts of my chest, guys. So when the anchor's up high and I'm bringing the cables down low, I'm putting a little more emphasis on the lower part of my pecs. All right, mid anchor points pushing straight forward is kind of basically your entire chest, the lower and the upper pecs. And then in just a second, we're gonna move the anchor point down low and we're gonna be doing flies from down low up high. And that's gonna put more emphasis on the upper part of our chest. All right, so this next exercise is a fly, except we're only gonna be doing one arm at a time. And I'm gonna explain some of the cool things that occur and the benefits that you get from just doing one arm. Now, remember the first exercise was a, was a fly. The second exercise was a press. Third exercise, we're back to doing a fly. But these flies are at a mid anchor, not a high anchor. And we're just gonna be doing one arm at a time. So pre-stretch, I wanna start, okay, so that my torso is facing roughly a 90 degree angle to the band here, okay? And I like to just put my off hand on my chest here. And I'm just going to I have a bend in my elbow. It's not, I'm not, I'm not locked out. So I have a, a slight bend in my elbow and I'm gonna bring this, not just to the midpoint, I'm gonna bring it all the way across my chest. Okay, back, all the way across. Now when we're doing two hands at the same time, we, we hit each other at the midpoint. That's as far as you can go. That's the max contraction with, with two hands. But when you're doing one hand, you can bring the handle all the way across your chest. And now we have more range of motion, okay? Because we're only doing one arm at a time. So how many reps do you do, guys? The best rep range for building muscle is eight to 12 reps, okay? So pick a weight, guys, that's difficult to do with good form for somewhere in that rep range. So I can't tell you how much weight to use, but make sure you're using good form. And by the time you get to the 8th, 10th, or 12th rep, you need to be close to failure. Now, I'm not going to failure right now, okay? I'm not getting close to failure because I'm talking to you guys, and I'm just trying to explain the exercise and the form. So you guys need to put more effort into it basically than I am. So here I am, my torso or my chest is at a, about a 90 degree angle, okay, to the, to the angle of the bands right now, okay? That'll give me the best range of motion. And then I bring my hand all the way across my body for the maximum contraction, maximum range of motion, all the way across. And you can really feel it here flexing, guys. I have that slight bend in my elbow, just like my right side, and I'm keeping that slight bend in my elbow all the way through the full range of motion here, guys. So right here, you ought to really feel your pec flex and contract. And make sure you're far enough away from the anchor at the, at the beginning of each rep back here. If I'm too close back to the door, I got no resistance for the first third of the movement. So I step away from the anchor. So right now I already got a pretty good resistance. And here we go. Eight to 12, make sure that you get close to failure. All right, at the end of each set. You don't have to go to failure like the professional bodybuilders do. Just make sure that you're pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. All right, so guess what the fourth and final exercise is? It's a pressing movement, all right? And to vary things up and to hit the muscles from lots of different angles and put emphasis on different areas of our chest, that's 
that's really key to building a big chest. Variety of exercises and lots of angles, okay? So I've moved the anchor point all the way to the bottom. So we got a low anchor now, guys. All right. And the previous exercise was a fly movement. Guess what? We're going back to a pressing movement now, all right? So because I'm starting low and pushing up towards my head, it's going to simulate doing a dumbbell press on an incline bench. And when you do that, you emphasize the upper part of your chest. Now, yes, we're still working the lower chest also, but we're just putting a little more emphasis on the upper and less on the lower. And that means we're not using as large a percentage of our chest muscles, which means it's going to be harder to do. All right. So, so you're not going to be able to do nearly as much weight. Okay. When you're doing this particular exercise. So once again, I like to kind of get it in my starting position and then I kind of step away from the door or the anchors so that I feel kind of the correct amount of pretension here. Okay. So see how the bands are pulling down and I want to push up basically on the same angles that the bands are currently in. It's a very starting point. So I don't want to push forward like this. I want to push up and then bring my hands together pretty much like we would be doing with dumbbells, okay? And if you just rotated my body right now and put me laying on my back on an incline bench press and stuck a couple of dumbbells in my hands, this movement would look almost identical. So you're not going to be able to use a lot of resistance with bands, all right? You may, you know, like I'm just using one single band on this particular movement, but I can really feel up here and the front part of my shoulders, okay? So your shoulders are broken into three muscle groups, okay? So anterior, lateral, and posterior. And when you're pushing like this, you're using a lot of that front shoulder muscle of your front delt. And anytime you're pushing, you're contracting your triceps also. So great compound exercise where we're getting chest, shoulders, and triceps at the same time for really good exercises. And the reason why they're so good together is because there's actually a lot of variety in those four different exercises. And that's what's really important to building any muscle group. I don't care whether it's your biceps, your chest, or your legs, you need to incorporate lots of different exercises that use different ranges of motion and different movement mechanics, which require different muscle fibers to engage more and less depending on each exercise. And then finally, guys, you got to push yourself, okay? Pick weights that are difficult to do for eight to 12 reps, all right? And that's the rep range. Now, how many sets do you do, guys? Well, we're doing four exercises here. You need to do, because it's a big muscle group, I would say at least eight total sets. And I would do two sets of each exercise, minimum. For you guys that are in better shape and want to push yourself harder, you guys can easily do three sets of each exercise. Hence, that's, that would be 12 total sets of chest. And then finally, guys, the only way to build a big, impressive chest is to stick with it and never give up on yourself.